So let's get started. Um, we got a question from Mark. Uh, okay, this is a this is a good kind of an interesting, a little different question, but it, it'll be fun. How do you set goals? This is from Mark. How do you set goals so you know you finished the program? Um, this would be uh, a question that right there, uh, th let's put a line in the sand. Uh, uh, I do a lot of programs that are like 12 week programs. Uh, that's Dave Turner's peaking program for Olympic lifting. Uh, Marty Gallagher has a, a, a really long peaking program that he gives his power lifters to. On those kind of programs, yeah, you know it's over because you step on the platform at a, an Olympic lifting competition or at a powerlifting competition and you get ready to go. Uh, so real quick, Mark, I call that performance. Now, fitness is the ability to the ability to do a task. That goes all the way back to Charles Darwin, and I'm sure uh, countless generations before that probably basically meant the same thing. Um, fit, and I say this all the time, uh, comes from the old Nordic to, to uh, it means to knit. Um, the best way to think of uh, fitness really is a jigsaw puzzle when uh, the piece fits, you know, everything ties in. So are you fit really just means, you know, are, are you, can you handle the task? Performance is slightly different because it's when someone calls your name and you step up on the stage and you go. Uh, when I think of most programs, when I think of most programs, because of my, my sports background, I tend to think that you're trying to peak for something at a certain time in a certain place. But in your question, you asked for more. So let's go on to that. So I guess right in the beginning, let's make sure we're going to push, uh, you know, the nationals are on, you know, June 26th. We're not thinking that way. We're thinking of other programs. Some programs are time duration. For example, a 30-day push-up challenge, but did you hear the word you used, challenge, mercifully ends after 30 days. Do you have any helpful guidelines to design programs with set endpoints or have an objective and for even more general purpose programs, easy strength, for example, so one can say, I finished X program, reflect on the program's success, make changes, or consider a new challenge. Um, he has a he has a follow up here, and I'm going to read it. But I think I I think many of our listeners probably already know where I'm going to head with the answer. For example, I train for a 5K run at the end of October. There is a clear end goal and end date for my running season. For context, I had to start with intervals, 10 seconds uh, run and one minute walk. So a 5K is pretty lofty goal for me. Okay. My current progress is 20 intervals of 54 second runs with a two to three, a two minute walk three days per week. That's an interesting way to put together a program. I increased the run duration interval by six seconds every week with the goal of running the whole 5K. Last year, I only managed to run about half of it and walked the remainder. I still consider this a success, consider my starting point. You know, I'd like to uh, maybe discuss your running program. Um, you know, as a track coach, uh, we would do things differently, but um, keep doing what you're doing. But we could talk about it another time. You, it, one of the foundation foundational points of mo most good goal setting things are is start with the end in mind. And I think that's an issue we often have. So you used a couple of words here that I want to make sure we talk about them. In my world and in your example here, Mark, we're talking about a specific day, a specific time, and the gun's going to go off in your case or whatever happens with the 5K run. Uh, I don't, I don't sure if they use a gun or not, but okay, the, you begin, um, you, you run, you know, 13, 14, 15, 20 minutes later, you finish. Uh, yay for you, high fives around, and you've completed the task. That's the track and field model. That's the uh, the weightlifting model, including Olympic lifting, powerlifting. And that, of course, would be the, the swimming model. You know, we those those are the sports that would be the easiest for me to talk about pure, pure peaking programs. Let's move those just to the side. 
Then you mentioned challenges. Now, challenges are kind of a great idea. I think challenges are marvelous for most people. Uh, you, you, take a, you take a month aside, you take 20 days aside, you take two weeks aside, and you do something. Uh, one of the reasons I like the Atkins diet so much is for two weeks, you're just going to, you're going to try to go zero carbs. Well, if it's an absolute disaster for you by the way you're wired or, or whatever, and you, you, you get to the end of the two weeks and you say, I'm never doing that again. Good. Because maybe that tells you that of the countless choices for dietary restrictions, uh, that's not one for you. Uh, my friends who've done the, the Phil Maffey tone two week uh, thing, they've said that the fun part uh, of it is after the two weeks of, of holding back on things, then you start adding a food a, a day or, or however it works out. I think it's, you know, and if your body doesn't like the reaction, you throw that one to the side for a while. Two weeks, you know, two weeks. Uh, the 10,000 swing challenge is, is, you know, as designed is 20 workouts of 500 swings a day. Well, when you finish the 20th workout, you're finished, you're done. There's nothing else. I mean, uh, you might have, and the interesting thing, you might have no, uh, no physical changes at all. Now, a lot of people, and like with me, I've always noticed my grip is better after it and my hinge is better. Uh, and I usually promise I'll never do that again. And then I get looped into it just like a couple months ago, I got looped into doing it again. Those are challenges. I, I think for the, so for the general population, I think it's important to understand the value of a peaking program. And you look at that, and there is value to that because there's going to be an events even for, I mean, my neighbor right there who's working on her lawn. Uh, um, she might have a reunion coming up. She might have a, a, I don't know, a wedding or something like that. And she wants to look a little special for it. Well, give us 12 weeks. We can arrange some things. Good things happen. Uh, the wedding or reunion happens. Good for you. Uh, ideally, some of the stuff would stick, you know, if she decides that water is the most important beverage in her life or that she needs more sleep every night. You know, blessings, 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 win, 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 good, good, good. Challenges have a value. And I like what you said about the push-up challenge because at the end of it, you're like, ah, oh, I'm so glad that's behind me. And then there's that other kind of fuzzy one in the middle where we, we buy a book, we read an article, we get a program, we, we get an ebook, and there's these programs in there and we do them. My concern with those kinds of things always is make sure it's a principle-based program. For me, if you're going to do any program in the world, uh, you know, Pat Flynn and I have talked about this on his podcast a number of times. I think for most people, you know, two to four days a week, you should you can lift weights. For most people, one day a week, it's nice to get kind of sweaty, okay? For most, you know, and that would be a co complexes or sprints up a hill or whatever it is. Uh, probably every day, but certainly three to four days a week, a, a longer walk. Uh, Water is your major beverage, you know, vegetables, sleep, you know the drill. If a program is based on good principles, uh, this, this ebook you bought is based on good principles. Then I'm all I, I, then I'm all for it. Um, in the same way that if you know the the bulk of your m meals you, and just you know if the bulk of your meals here are these twenty wonderful foods that are the staple of every meal and you know I, I always on the wandering weights I always send out those little lists of uh, sometimes I send out little list of the superfoods. Easy Strength for Fat Loss, the booklet has that little whole chapter on, you know, all the superfoods because I love them. You know, it's usually salmon, all almonds is usually on the list. Olives is always on the list. Coffee's always on the list. Sometimes wine, sometimes chocolate. Uh, oatmeal almost always makes it. Certain yogurts almost always make certain berries, blueberries especially. Uh, you know, so if those are your, you know, 20 base foods and then after that, you add other ingredients, you're going to be fine. So good training is a lot of like uh, a good foundation for a an eating program. 
as long as you got the basics, the staples in there, the, the, the kind of the, you know, the super foods or the super ideas like walking after you lift or, you know, lifting weights, walking, those are the super ideas, I guess, uh, you'll be okay. Uh, the issue we have here, Mark, and the reason I wanted to answer this question is because you have a point in here called, what about the end goal? And I think personally that that should be established right in the beginning. So every year when I was a young thrower, I would, you know, I would write up a, a list of what I learned from last year, ideas I was going to have from this season. And then I'd write down, I'd write down a goal. And very often I got the goal. I know my freshman year in college, I got my goal, no question. I, I wanted to throw 160. I was shy of my sophomore goal, which was throwing 180. I threw 172. Um, some years I got my goals and some years I didn't. Um, but that's, I would write those goals up in September, October, when school started, knowing that I had until May and June where the big track meets were to get to them. So we're looking at, you know, eight to 10 months every year of really being that goal focused. Having a good goal at the end is fine. The issue is, is that most questions I get, most of the things people want from me are generally goals about fat loss or weight loss uh, is what they usually say, but it's usually fat loss is what they mean. The, the best thing you can do for most goals is little and often over the long haul. So uh, when I'm reading this question, you have this thing in October. Uh, we have about six months-ish, maybe a little less, but basically about six months uh, from when I'm reading this question to this October race. That is plenty of time, plenty of time for you to achieve the goal of finishing the 5K without stopping. It's just the idea that you know, and like you're doing, you just have to keep building on it, building on it, building on it. Don't rush the process. Just keep coming back. Um, incremental improvements is far superior, I think, long term than these quick hit, you know, hit and run kind of programs. Brad Pillen, the guy who um, eat, stop, eat books, uh, intermittent fasting. You know, he makes a point about doing this one day a week, 24 hour fast. So, um you eat dinner on Monday and then you eat dinner on Tuesday that you don't eat in between. There's your one day a week fast. It's pretty doable. Uh, it really truly is. Uh, some of us naturally do that, you know, when you have busy careers and kids. Um, I can remember so many times as a coach talking to an assistant coach and it may be something like, I forgot to eat because you get so busy, you know, with everything going on. But his point is, you know, you might only lose a third to half a pound a week doing this. But, you know, that's 26 pounds a year. Uh, that is a huge change. But if you try to lose 26 pounds in a month, that doesn't stick. So I, I like your question here. I, I'm i starting to get myself a little less focused on the end goals. Uh, I'm much more focused on the process. I say this to my athletes, I say this in my workshops, you know, if you focus on the process, the results speak for themselves. So the only thing I would say for you is if you continue to focus on the process of your goals, and this is true for all of our listeners, the results will speak for themselves. I hope that helped. It's always a, these are tough questions to answer sometimes, um, but uh, I, I did my best. And thank you uh, for, for asking that. We got a question from Harry. Um, Harry. 